You're joining us in here in the auditorium or you're joining us live stream. Thank you so much for gathering together with us at church. Here we are in the auditorium at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. Looking forward to a great time in God's house. And to those of us who are here, thank you for gathering together our first in-person Bible study in over eight weeks. And uh, what a joy. I think March the 18th was the last time we were in here on a Wednesday. And, um, but uh, here we are again. Thank you so much for being here. We're looking forward to a great time together tonight. And uh, so, if you would, join me in prayer. And then Brother Daniel is going to come and uh, lead us in a couple songs together. And uh, if you would, though, as we go to prayer, let's thank the Lord for what He's given us. It's amazing when you don't have something, how, uh, how it makes you appreciate what you do have. And uh, we're thankful to God for allowing us to be together tonight. Father, be with us now as our prayer. Lord, we are so very grateful for the opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, I pray as we get in to look at our spiritual inheritance here in just a little bit, as we get into a Bible study, I pray that you'd make it rich for us, dear Lord. I pray that you would open up the scriptures, and I pray, dear Lord, that you would open up the realization of what it is that we have as being children of yours, dear God, I pray. And then, dear Lord, we just certainly want to take a little time to say thank you for allowing us to be here together tonight. I pray your safety and protection on all of our members, Lord, as we have through all of this ordeal. I pray that you'd continue to keep us safe and bless and protect us. And then, Lord, I pray that you keep us safe and protected in the service this evening. We're thankful for the opportunity to gather together tonight. And, uh, Lord, we're just in awe of how good you are to us. And uh, here we are. We've met to worship you. And I pray that you would bless our time as we do just that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to sing a couple songs together. The words will be up on the screen for you tonight. So let's all stand to our feet. We'll start by singing a song we're glad we can actually sing. Brethren, we have met to worship. We have met to worship. So let's lift it up on a couple verses of this song this evening. Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. Brethren, pray, and holy manna will be showered all around. Brethren, see poor sinners round you, some bring the brink of woe. Will you have hell is moving? Can you bear to let them go? continue singing another song this evening he is able to deliver thee and no matter what uh, we face in life no matter what we go through we can always trust that our God is there for us and that our God is there with us so let's lift it up on a couple verses of this song as well this evening tis the grandest aim through the ages rung he is able to deliver thee Tis the grandest theme through the ages rung. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world e'er sung. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Go by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. One more verse. Tis the grandest theme, let the tidings roll to the guilty heart, to the sinful soul. Look to God in faith, he will make thee whole. Our God is able to deliver thee. 
He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Go by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Thank you so much. You may be seated. I want to give you a couple of announcements and then I'll go over some prayer requests. And uh, this is again our first prayer meeting back in uh, the auditorium here for a couple months. And uh, so I'm going to ask Brother Marty Scroggs, if you didn't mind, to uh, here in just a moment come up to the platform and pray for our church and just ask God's blessings upon it. And the way we'll do it is I'll I'll uh, give you a few announcements and then some prayer requests and then I'll pray for these requests and then ask Brother Marty just to pray for God's continued leading and blessing on our church. And of course, as you know, Chairman of our Deacons and we're so thankful for the opportunity to meet together tonight. Let me give you these couple of announcements. First, don't forget this Sunday, 8.30 and 11 o'clock, we'll still have both morning services. 8.30 and 11, Brother Willette will preach at both of those and uh, then we'll also have 6.30, we'll have uh, an evening service in person here and uh, so we'll be ha having the main floor open and Lord willing we'll have the balcony open. We've got a couple rooms down that have some closed circuit televisions. We'll uh, have an overflow in there so we can keep everybody uh, distant from one another and uh, just bear with us. We want to try to be as safe and as appropriate as we can and uh, so I know that everybody's got varying opinions but uh, please just help us in all of these things. We're looking forward to great things ahead and so we want you to be here on Sunday morning at 8.30 or 11 and then back in the evening. I believe I I, I, if they put it out today, I think um, said in a video that I believe that R.B. Willette will be an instant favorite here at our church. And um, I'll tell him when he gets here now, if he totally bombs, then it'll be the first time I've heard him do that. And I'd hate for him to do it here at our church. But uh, you're going to love Brother Willette. He's a powerful preacher and a great, great uh, man of God would trust the Lord will uh, give us a great Sunday. And uh, then, as I mentioned, Sunday, Graduate Sunday has been postponed. We'll get back to you about that, and we'll honor all of those, our graduates. If you've got somebody that's graduating from high school or from college or some other institution or something, then please let us know in the office, and we'll be certain to uh, honor them on that day. Let me give you a few prayer requests, and then, as I mentioned, I'm going to pray for them and then ask Brother Marty to come and pray for our church and uh, just to thank God for the, His hand being upon on us at this uh, difficult, different time that we've had. But let me give you these requests. Continue to pray, if you would, for the family of Marilyn Goodman, this Miss Beverly Lovegrove's sister. She went home to be with the Lord and Stephanie Rourke's aunt. And uh, so please pray for the Goodman family. Uh, that service was today. And uh, we're praying for uh, the family of Judy Matney. Brother Steve isn't here tonight. Had a doctor's appointment and couldn't get done with that in time to get uh, back to church, he said. So please keep Steve in your prayers, especially since he's not here. I challenge you to reach out to him, some of you men. Uh, just uh, fellowship with him and reach out to him and uh, let him know that you're praying for him. And uh, then we're also praying for... Uh, Mildred Hall, this is uh, Becky Roten and Rick Hall's mom, uh, was in the hospital back home now. We're thankful for that and had uh, a a AFib issues. So I want you to keep, keep her in your prayers if you would please. And uh, then we got a request for Katie Davenport from Katie Davenport. Her mom's in the hospital having some tests and so if you'd please pray for her, we'd certainly appreciate that. And it's so good to see Miss Nikki Garber back here. And uh, we are keeping her lifted up in prayers. She's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. And uh, you just ask the Lord to bless and lead in all of that as well. And then continue to pray for Laura Moore, has some more chemo to, uh, to uh, be involved with. And so keep her in your prayers if you would. And then several that we're praying for that uh, have been uh, having issues. Sherry Eden's got moved to a rehab, uh, recovering from a brain hemorrhage. And uh, Miss Rachel Loveless uh, broke her leg in three places. And so she's recovering from that uh, here about a week and a half ago or so she did. So keep all of these in your prayers if you would please. And then we want to pray for some, Miss Pat Shaw, as she continue, continues to have some health issues. And we're also praying for Pat Scalf that the Lord would just uh, strengthen these ladies as they have issues that they're going on with. So... What I'd like to do is, we've altered the service just a little bit, and I'm going to lead you in prayer, and as I pray, I ask you to, and uh, then at the end, I won't necessarily say amen, I'll just uh, close and kind of change it over to Brother Marty, and then he'll close uh, this time of prayer, and uh, ask God's blessings on the church, but then also thank him for what he's done. So let's do that, let's go to prayer. Dear Father, we do thank you now for this time to be in your house. 
And Lord, we specifically pray for these requests that uh, have been given to us by some of our good church folks and others that have called in about one thing or another. I pray for Katie Davenport's mom, that you would bless her, dear Lord, and give the doctors wisdom as they do these tests to try to figure out what's going on. And uh, Lord, just strengthen her through this. I pray for these families that have lost loved ones, dear Lord, the Goodman family. Please be with Beverly tonight. Uh, be with Stephanie. Be with the rest of the family, dear Lord, as uh, they're thankful that, they're, that they know where uh, Marilyn's at. She's in heaven with you. But Lord, still uh, a sorrowful thing. I pray that you bless them. And then I pray for Steve, that you would help him in the loss of Miss Judy Matney. And uh, Lord, we, we again, she's a believer, knows you. And she's absent from the body, present with you. Sweet services, dear Lord, yesterday and today. But Lord, still leaves a hole in these good folks' heart. I pray that you would comfort them, help them, and bless them. I do pray for Mildred Hall. You just continue to lift her up, dear Lord. Strengthen her, bless her, and uh, the health concerns that she's having right now. I pray uh, for Miss Nikki that the test or the doctor's appointment will go well tomorrow, Lord. Just give great wisdom and insight to these good doctors. And then I pray for Laura Moore, dear Lord, that you would uh, make the chemo treatments very effective. But Lord, I pray that you would encourage her and bless her in the midst of all these things as well. Uh, continue to heal. Rachel Loveless, we pray, and Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do. There's so much we have to be thankful for, but these physical requests, we ask you to work in a special way, and we'll thank you for all that you do, and Lord, we're so thankful to be your children in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you tonight for how good you are to us. Lord, you're such a good God, and Lord, this has been a, a different time for us that we've been through, and Lord, we realize that you're in control and that, that, Lord, that you know what's going on. You knew this before the foundation of the world was going to happen, and I thank you for that. We rest in that. Lord, we just thank you for this church. Thank you for what it means in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together as family, Lord, as, as like-minded believers to where we can worship you in word and truth and gather around. And, and Lord, it's just it's such a blessing to be in your house, Lord. Help us to never take it for granted. Help us to, in the days ahead, to, to do more for you and to serve you even more, Lord, through this time. Father, I pray that you'll just uh, continue to bless our church, keep a hedge of protection about us, Lord. Lord, I thank you for what you've done to make it able for us to come in tonight. I pray that you'll continue to help things to get better as our leaders in the country uh, make decisions and things. Lord, I pray that you'll just help us there. Thank you for what you've done to protect each member. Watch over them, and, and God, I just, uh, again, thank you for the wonderful opportunity we have. Thank you for loving us and, and providing a church, and thank you for our family, Lord, as, a, as, as fellow believers we've come together. Pray that you're blessed tonight. Pray that you're blessed, Pastor, as he brings the message. Pray, Lord, that you'll just anoint the words he has for us to hear. Pray, Lord, that you'll uh, let your word fall on fertile ground and that it ch changes, Lord, that while we're here that we'll go away being different doing more for you again lord we just thank you for how good you are thank you for this opportunity lord you're such a good god and we ask you these things in jesus name amen amen well it's wonderful to be able to pray about the different needs that we face in our lives and be sure if you have anything you want us to pray for you need us uh, to keep in, in mind you let us know uh, but this time we're going to uh, transition and we've been uh, showing you a lot of different videos as you've been at home of different missionaries and things uh, as you've been there just a way to give you some updates and, and keep you abreast about what's going on in the lives of our missionaries through this time and and uh, we just thought we'd just continue that at least i have a video we'd like to show you this evening of one of our faithful missionaries and uh, so we're going to uh, watch this video and, and just get a quick update this evening and uh, then we'll sing one more song before pastor preaches and so if that video is ready if we could have somebody uh, to cut the house lights so we can see a little bit better and we'll watch this video at this time here we are in the heart of santiago a city of seven million people and we're right at the time when everybody's getting off work heading to home be with the family, but those are families that need to hear the gospel. And when we think about how can we effectively reach a place like this with the gospel, it's not through just starting one church that'll reach out into one neighborhood and pastor that one church. We've got to think about starting multiple churches, starting a church in every neighborhood so that every family has the opportunity to have a gospel preaching church near their house. Having one church for over 50,000 people, we would need 140 churches just here in the city. And the truth is, one church to reach 50,000 people is almost impossible. 
We really need two or 300 churches here preaching the gospel. And that's the reason why the Chili Training Center is a fundamental ministry for us to focus on training men for the ministry, training men to go out and to start churches, to reach this community with the gospel. Imagine having dozens and dozens of young men and women preparing for the ministry. That's what we're praying and serving and striving to do here in the capital city, to train more people, to start more churches, to reach more with the gospel. During the last 14 years, God has allowed us to see several churches planted, many pastors trained, and now over 50 young men and women who are preparing at the Chile Training Center. It's exciting to see what God has done over these years, but the truth is many churches like your church have prayed for us, have partnered with us, have invested in our ministry and allowed us to see great things done by God in Chile for his honor and for his glory. We wanna thank you. Thank you for giving to missions. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being a part of ministries like ours around the world. Continue to pray for us while we're back on furlough. One of our goals is to raise more support, to partner with these young church planners as they go out to see churches planted throughout Chile. We're working along their side for two to three years while they grow the young church and the young church can take on their own financial responsibilities. It's an exciting thing to see. Churches being planted, churches growing, and then those young churches supporting missionaries and supporting other church planters to go out and reach Chile with the gospel. And we have the opportunity to work along their side and to help along the way. So pray God will provide the needed funds to make this ministry possible. Well, it's great to be able to see what God is doing, and it's, I've had the privilege, I know several from our church, of going to be with the Holtz down there in Chile, and uh, it's a wonderful, a wonderful ministry, and uh, really, in my estimation, he is uh, one of the, uh, the great missionaries of our day, just to, to spend time with him and see uh, his vision for, uh, for his country and his city in particular, uh, and to, to be able to take part in the ministry there and all that God is doing, uh, and just through, through your gifts and all that you do uh, to, to to, to uh, be able to give. Uh, you're supporting a great work there and a great missionary, and so glad we could show you that video. We're going to stand and sing one more song together, and then Pastor will come and preach. There shall be showers of blessing. Let's lift it up on several of these verses this evening. There shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we seated and it's a joy to get to get into the word of God and I trust that you've come expecting a blessing you've got a handout on your sh on your seat uh, there and uh, uh, Miss Stephanie put those out she's gloved and put them out to you just in case you were wondering or worrying and I know that um, 
uh, it's uh, utmost important to, uh, to us to be safe, and we thank God for the opportunity and the wherewithal that He's given us to do that. And just in case you're wondering, of course, we did have the service here yesterday for Miss Judy Matney, and everything uh, was sanitized after that. And uh, so we just want you to know that we're taking every precaution that we feel is, is uh, necessary to keep us safe, and we're thanking God for the folks joining in with us in that. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse number 32, it talks about us having an inheritance. Acts chapter 20, verse number 32, we'll start there, and then I'll contrast it just a little bit with a verse over in Luke, but Acts chapter 20, verse number 32, the Bible says this, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. The Bible talks so many different places about this inheritance. Uh, contrasted with Luke chapter 12, verse number 15, the Bible says, For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance uh, of the things which he possesseth. Now when we think about inheritance, we usually think, Wow, we're waiting for that uncle to die. I think all the uncles that I think had a little bit of hold out of hope for are gone. And uh, so now I'm just waiting for somebody I don't even know, but they knew me from afar and they just liked me for some reason. We think of inheritance in that way. We think of inheritance that somebody had done really well and they want to leave something to different people and that's certainly an inheritance. But we think about the possessions that we're going to leave our children. We think about what was left to us, if anything. We think about uh, it's a bad thing to start planning toward uh, getting something. Boy, as soon as that fella, boy, as soon as he leaves, woo party on. We don't want to do that because sooner or later the tables will be turned. It'll be us that people start looking at and start figuring out what they're going to do after we're gone. But you think about what was left to us, but more important to those questions is our spiritual inheritance. And the Bible has a lot more to say about that than it does those uh, for inheritance. And uh, we think about the song that we sing in the sweet by and by. But you understand the inheritance that we get through the spiritual gifts that God gives us, the spiritual blessings that He gives us, they're helping us right now. I think about folks that are looking toward heaven, and I certainly am. I'm thankful for it. But not only are we blessed by a home in heaven if you're saved tonight, but you're also blessed by the peace that that home in heaven you see in the, on the future horizon. You're blessed with peace because it already settles your soul now because that's where you are going. You know when something's taken care of and you know well that it is taken care of, then that gives you a little bit of uh, a rest in your soul. And so if we can trust uh, a lot of people with some physical things, then we certainly can trust God with our soul. And we understand that not only is that spiritual inheritance, that wonderful land called heaven, good for us then, I would submit to you it's good for you now. Because we understand that that salvation that it brings is not only what we look forward to, but it's also what we have now. So let's get into it, if you will. We're going to start in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 1. We're going to look this week and next week, Lord willing, into this aspect of our spiritual inheritance. And so in Hebrews, we see verse number, or chapter 1, verse number 14. Let me find my place here. Hebrews 1, verse number 14 the Bible says this, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? The Bible talks on up in verse number 13, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And God, you understand, is the Lord of all. He's, he's God of all. Some people say, well, uh, I, we need to make Christ, you need to make Christ Lord of your life. And that's true. You do. You need to come to Him as your Savior and Lord, yes. But He's Lord of everything, whether anybody admits it or not. You understand, it's not, we're not, or he's not dependent on us to confer with him about who he is and then say, yes, we do believe you're God, the Lord of all. He's Lord of all. If you, go to, if you go to your grave denying it, he's Lord of all. And so he's Lord of the angels. He's Lord of all the creation. He's Lord of everything. And then it goes from verse number 13, talking about those angels, to verse number 14. It says, are they not all ministering spirits, serving spirits, are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them, who shall be the heirs of salvation. You understand that the angels not the heirs of salvation, but those that, of us that can be saved. 
those were the heirs of salvation. And so they are ministering to us. And the Bible is clear that uh, God, uh, from different places in Scripture, God had used the angels to deliver message, had used angels to protect people, had used angels to uh, lead, guide, and direct in different ways. They are the ministers. We are the, they're ministering to us. We're the heirs of salvation. So you may be having a big inheritance coming from, from a, a rich relative, and I pray you do. That's wonderful. I hope it sets you up in some different things to help your financial status. But better than that, we're the heirs of salvation, meaning that we are the recipients of that. Now, we don't have to wait till anybody dies to receive it either. We're the heirs of that salvation that God has given to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. We have salvation from sin available to all. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we have salvation to heaven available to all as well. You understand it's two sides of the same coin. We're saved from our sin, saved from the penalty of it, and saved from hell. But we're saved to a wonderful place called heaven. It's not just that we escape the punishment, although we did. We also enjoy the wonderful aspects of heaven. So we're the heirs of salvation. As one old boy said, we've got it made in the shade with lemonade. I mean, we can't get anything better than what we've got. We're the heirs of salvation. If we live a pauper's life from now until the time we draw our last breath and we go to heaven, we are sure sitting pretty. And so we understand we're the heirs of salvation. And so that spiritual inheritance that God gives us cannot be surpassed or not even, cannot even come close to anything else that we get to enjoy. But we see not only are we the heirs of salvation, but if you turn over a few chapters, chapter number 6 of Hebrews, the Bible talks about us being the heirs of promise. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 17. Wherein God... Hebrews 6, 17. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of His counsel, the permanent character of His word, if you want the, just the, uh, the, the permanence of it, confirmed it by an oath. You understand that as it's talking about he's exhorting people to be the maturity of the believers in those verses leading up to this spot. But here we see God more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, that's us, the heirs of the promise of heaven, the heirs of the promise of salvation, the immutability of his counsel, meaning the permanence of what he does. He confirmed it by an oath. You understand the promise of heaven is sweeter to me and sweeter to us as believers, because we see more and more people going over there. The church here has seen several in the last couple of several, several months or many months. And so in our own families, we see people there and we understand that the heirs of the promise of heaven means more to us now than when you were a 12-year-old kid or 11-year-old kid or 8-year-old kid or whenever it was that you trusted Christ as your Savior, you under maybe a Sunday school class somewhere or at your mother's knee, you said, I do want to ask Jesus to be my Savior because I want to go to heaven. But the older you're getting now and the more things that you see and the more uh, difficulties are in this life and the more, uh, the, the, the more schemes and uh, rascals that you encounter, you look and you see all of that that's shaky ground and you see the promise of heaven you see the heirs of the promise, that's us. We're the heirs of the promise of heaven. And my friend, we're in a win-win situation. We are in a win-win situation. You say, how do you mean? Because if we live down here, then Jesus is with us. And if He takes us on, then we're with Him. He said, never leave us nor forsake us. That's on this time. And then when we go to be with Him, as the Apostle Paul was used of God to say, we are Far better. Philippians chapter 1, I believe it is, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having desire to part and be with Christ, which is far better. Now I think all of us, most of us in here, you've lived long enough to realize that it is far better. Oh, I remember the days, and some of you all do as well, when you were coming up to milestones in your life, when you were getting ready to get out of high school, and you said, Lord, I want you to come back, but I'd sure like to finish this up. And then when it got time to get married, you said, Lord, I want you to come back, but... If you wouldn't mind giving me a few days to experience that, I'd be grateful. And then kids came along, and same thought. And now, I don't have anything left. <laughs> Get old and retire with Amy. And that's wonderful. 
No offense. <laughs> we, uh, we, got, we got the redhead graduated. We got one more to go. And uh, we've hit all those high spots and praise God for it. But then you see the older you get and the closer you get to heaven, you see how silly it was to even think that anything down here would begin to compare as you, sit, as you look in the Word of God and you see about being the heirs of the promise of heaven. And then as you look at the immutability, big word for just being God doesn't change. And when God promises us something, you know, somebody did leave you something in a will somewhere. If there's some attorney some, uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's, that's from an opposing force, may do all that he can to try to prove that that person that wrote that wasn't in their right mind and that promise doesn't go to you. But you don't have to worry about that with God. The immutability, big word for he doesn't change any. When he says it, he'll do it. And so we understand that the, we are heirs of the promise of heaven. I heard a story once that John Rice, a true story, that he had a gun pulled on him. And uh, as he had the gun pulled on him, somebody didn't like what he was preaching. John Rice started the Sword of the Lord back in 1934. And uh, in Dallas, Texas, and so he was coming out of a, of a hotel where he was staying, and somebody didn't like what he was saying, and he shoved a gun into him. He told him he, told him he was going to kill him. And later, I can't imagine he was so bold then, but he said he was, I don't know. But uh, he said, you can't threaten me with heaven. Funny aspect of it. So they said John R. Rice had a pretty pop belly, and that's where the gun was pointed. And the guy said, I'm going to blow your brains out. So I guess that's where his brains were located at the time. But he said, you can't threaten me with heaven. Now, whether that was something he wished he said, and later he said it in his mind, and later he said it ver verbally, I don't know. But truly, I I'm not looking to forward to dying. So many times it's involved with pain, and I don't like that. I spend much of my life trying to avoid it. But we understand that I'm not afraid. And I know that most of you aren't in this room afraid either, because of the promise we have. We understand that God's been so faithful up till now. That he's going to be faithful in this promise that he gives. We're the heirs of the promise. We're like, we're like pets. You know, people talk about teachers' pets or children or parents' pets. Well, yeah, he's a pet of that father. That's who we are. We're like the favorite child and, and the, uh, the, the, we, that, uh, that God just shows his blessings upon. So we're the heirs of the promise of heaven. We see not only that, if you look over in chapter 11 of Hebrews as well. Hebrews 11, verse number 7, in that great hall of fame of faith section, uh, talking about Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham, Sarah, and all of those. In verse number 7 of Hebrews 11, the Bible says this, By faith Noah, being warned, warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, we know that, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Verse number 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please Him. We understand that we're the heirs of righteousness. And how does righteousness come? Righteousness comes by faith. For by faith, are you, grace you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. The Bible says in verse number 1 of Hebrews 11, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And without that faith, in verse number 6, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And so you understand, we're the heirs of righteousness. Do you understand what that entails? I'm sure you don't. I know I don't. But we are in the righteousness of Christ, clothed in his righteousness, or else we'd never be able to make it to heaven. And so we are heirs of that righteousness, the righteousness that only Christ possesses, yet we're able to get in on that or be heirs of that because of the faith that's required to be seen as righteous. And God gives that faith, for by faith, grace are you saved through faith. And we understand that He gives that as well. And we, we see that we're the heirs of righteousness. And so as Noah was in the ark of wood and saved those family members that were in there, then we in the ark of safety of Jesus Christ to the saving of our souls are the heirs of righteousness. You don't, get, you don't get your way to heaven just because God said, wow, I'd like for those ones to all go. We get our 
ticket punch to heaven, if you will, when the things that kept you out of heaven get taken care of. And so we've heard the story of salvation so much that it just seems uh, routine or wrote to us and just seems so easily, easily overlooked. But friends, remember this, that there's no way you can get to heaven. And there's no way I can get to heaven. Because in the works of our righteousness, no one can. And so that's the beauty of being the heir of righteousness. Because here we get something just like you get an inheritance of something you may not have deserved from some family member somewhere. You didn't work for, somebody else did, and you got it passed on to you. Their work, your blessing, their savings and scrimping and all that, your blessings, their fortune, their, their, their passing on. So they're letting you be the inheritant or the, uh, getting the inheritance. They're letting you be the recipient, I should say, of that. So you're inheriting what their work was. Well, take that same scenario and look to Christ, Christ the Holy One, Christ taking the sins of the world. His righteousness is what's required to get into heaven, but we didn't work for it. We didn't work for it, yet He provided it, and so I get the benefit, just like I would of an inheritance of, of a, a certain uh, monetary sum, I get the inheritance of something I didn't work for, somebody else worked for it, somebody else got it given to them, some, or got it uh, through their, their uh, ability, somebody else achieved that success, and they gave it over to me as a kindness, as a whatever, they allowed me to be the recipient. Well, Jesus Christ is the righteous, He is the way, the truth, and life. We know all the verses. He's the, he's, the, uh, uh, he, he's the holiness. He is God. His work was then allowed to be inherited by me. And so there's a lot more than just, hey, did you pray and ask Jesus to be your Savior? That's how it happens. Yes, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. But there's a whole lot more that goes into it. Thank God we don't have to understand it all or we'd all be in trouble. We don't have to understand it all. It's just as simple as, as it was when I was a kid and you were a kid that you know Jesus, you, you hear about Him and He's the Savior, you want Him to be your Savior and you ask Him to save you. But there's a whole lot of things that all of the theologians in all the world right now can't begin to chip away at the significance of it, even in all their intelligence. But what happens is what Christ had that we didn't work for, He had, he is, he had it supernaturally because who He is it got gifted or it got received by us as an inheritance of righteousness. We became, at the end of verse number 7 that I already showed you, we and became heir of righteousness. And so my friend, our spiritual inheritance, our spiritual blessings that got poured onto us, just as if you'd inherited a fortune from some family member, that they worked long and hard for that, they gifted it to you. Christ, who has possesses all the fullness of the Godhead, bodily rests in Him, He gave us salvation and we became the heir of righteousness. I still don't think we understand how big this is. Because when God the Father, the holy judge, I am holy, be holy for I am holy, the holy judge looks on you, if you're a believer in Christ, he looks on you through the, as simply the righteousness of his son. Because I'm the heir of that. I don't think we get it yet. You know who you are, right? You know what you've done in this life, right? You say, well, preacher, I'm pretty good. No, you're not. not I'm not comparing you to your, your, your older brother. <laughs> you know who you are, right? You know those deepest, darkest thoughts that have gone in the recesses of your mind that you, that you would be embarrassed to anybody to know? You and I know, you know who you are and I know who I am. And if you're saved tonight, that's the person, you are the person that's going to heaven. But in order for that to happen, when the righteous judge sees you, he's going to have to see you as righteous. You say, preacher, we got a big problem. I know what I've done, and I know what I've done. But I, am become, I have become the heir 
of righteousness. Christ had it. I didn't deserve it. He possessed it, and he allowed me to become the heir of it. You say, well, I've cleaned up pretty good. You haven't cleaned up much at all. You say, I, I, I'm, I'm better than, or you may be better than you used to be, but you didn't start off too good. And so we are the heir of righteousness. We are the heirs of salvation, Hebrews 1. We're the, we're the heirs of the promise of heaven, Hebrews chapter 6. And we are the heirs of righteousness. Look over one more spot before we close tonight. Romans chapter 3, verse number 22. Romans chapter 3, of course, talking about salvation up, down, one side, the other. That's Romans 3.10, Romans 3.13, all of those. Uh, Romans 3.23. And all of most of us know Romans 3.23, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. But look back in Romans chapter 3, verse number 22. I'll read to you verse number 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. You want to see how bad you are? Look at the law, look at the prophets, and we'll see how bad we are. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there's no difference, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. We use verse number 23 as we witness the people and well we should. But look at the end of verse number 22. It is saying there's no difference. All of us are lost and are, are, are undone. And the righteousness of God back in verse number 22. Which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. So that, my friend, when it says the heir of righteousness in Hebrews 11, verse number 7, takes you to, ver to Romans chapter 3, verse number 22, and talks about the righteousness of God, which is what we have to have if we're ever going to get to heaven. You see, sometimes we think, well, it's so good that, that, um, that somebody's going to church, and I'm glad they are. Somebody got baptized, and I'm glad they did. Uh, Curtis Sutton used to say that you, it does, uh, uh, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage makes you a car. We need the righteousness of God. And in order to be an heir of righteousness of God, then that righteousness must come from Jesus Christ. And that doesn't come from saluting and giving allegiance to who He was. That comes instead by receiving Him as who He was, the Savior and your Savior personally. So we are the heirs of righteousness, and that righteousness is the righteousness of God, which without the righteousness of God, we will never enter heaven. Friend, our spiritual inheritance. If somebody leaves you $2 million and you've got to decide what to do with that, you are blessed. But I can give you a better inheritance than that, or I can tell you about a better inheritance than that, and that is the heir inheritance of righteousness. And I pray tonight that if you've never received that air, or if you're not an heir of righteousness, that you don't fool yourself into thinking that there's any other way to one day be in glory than to become that recipient of what you didn't earn to become that heir of righteousness. Father, I pray that you bless us now as our prayer. And Lord, here we've closed our first Bible study since being back in the, your house. And Lord, I pray for everyone here tonight that they would do some soul searching. I'm not asking them if they're church members. I'm not asking, dear Lord, if they've cleaned up their lives well. I'm not asking them if they grew up in a Christian home. I instead, dear Lord, I'm asking them if they're an heir of righteousness, if they have received the inheritance of salvation from God, what they don't deserve, and they'll be recipient of the righteousness of God which is required to go to heaven. Lord, I pray that you would convict every heart in here that needs convicted. And Lord, I pray for every person that possesses, that they are the heir, the recipient of that salvation. Then, dear Lord, I pray that their heart, is, I pray their soul is doing backflips inside of them right now thanking you for allowing them to be the heir of righteousness. Lord, thank you for myself for that. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed as our piano player begins to play. And
We're not having a come forward invitation, but here's my question to you. Are you an heir of righteousness? Are you saved tonight? Was there a time when the transaction was made that you received Christ as your Savior, you received the heir of righteousness, the heir of, you became the heir of salvation, you had received the inheritance of righteousness, I should say. You can say, preacher, I, I did, I, I, I know that. I may not remember the date, or I may remember the date, but it happened, I know it did. I remember the time. If that's you tonight, then your soul ought to be doing backflips. You ought to be thanking and praising the Lord for the inheritance of righteousness that you got. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not sure that that's ever happened. You know a lot of the lingo. You're here on a Wednesday night. But you say, preacher, I'm not sure that, I'm that, inher that I have that inheritance of righteousness. Would you lift your hand up and let me pray for you? I wouldn't come to you. I wouldn't embarrass you. I wouldn't call your name if I do know it. You'd say, preacher, would you pray for me? Would anybody at all lift your hand? spiritual inheritance do you have one as she continues to play if you're watching on live stream and you'd like someone to pray with you there's a couple of ways four two three four seven seven three three one one is our telephone number four two three four seven seven three three one one or prayer at brbc.us just the word prayer at brbc.us whether you're listening right here in the auditorium or you're watching online my friend I, I'm asking you the probing question do you have the spiritual inheritance of salvation if you do rejoice if you don't please be sure tonight you receive it I can't tell you how to receive an inheritance from a rich uncle as I joked about earlier but I can tell you how to receive the spiritual inheritance from Christ. You simply ask, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no difference between Jew, Greek, or any other uh, classification. He's rich unto all that call unto Him. And He will grant you the inheritance of righteousness, the inheritance of salvation. Now, Father, it's our prayer that you would bless. I pray that everybody in this room and everybody watching, dear Lord, is saved and they know it. Lord, that may be a stretch, and if there are some that aren't, dear Lord, I pray they would take care of it before they pillow their head tonight. And Lord, bless us that are saved to, put a, to have a pep in our step, dear Lord. If we can't physically, at least we can spiritually, knowing that I'm seen as righteous because of my spiritual inheritance given by Christ when I got saved. Bless us, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, God bless you. you may look this way. Thank you so much for being in church tonight. It's a joy to get to be here. And uh, more than you know, it's wonderful to see folks sitting in the pews. And we're thankful for the Bible study. And I trust that uh, you'll join us again next week. Lord willing, we'll continue and finish out this with the second half of our spiritual inheritance. And I trust that it's a blessing to you as well. But I want you to do me a favor. If there are people that you know that don't usually attend, even before nine weeks ago, ten weeks ago, I'm asking you to invite if they're of the health condition that they're not worried and, and, and they're uh, in, in a good category, then, then invite them to be with you on Sunday. If they're a little worried or afraid of that, then invite them to be online. I promise you what's going to happen, there's going to be some folks that hear about uh, Brother Willette after he's gone. And then they'll say, oh, you should have heard that guy. And then they'll go back and they'll, they'll hear him online, but it's just not the same as being in church. So... Uh, I'm asking you to do some thinking, praying, looking to see, okay, who should I remind to be in church Sunday? 
And uh, if you would all take that as a task, uh, you will not be disappointed. And they won't be disappointed. Brother Willette is a wonderful speaker. You're going to enjoy him. And uh, I'm trusting the Lord to do great things through him. So please do me that favor. Think about who you can text or, uh, or message or just call. And uh, tell them to don't forget 830, 11, uh, 830 or 11 Sunday morning and then Sunday night 630. Thank you for being in church tonight. God bless you. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.